This morning we're talking to Sipo Sisu Vilane, adventurer and motivational speaker. Welcome. Thank you very much indeed for having me. Now to introduce you to our listeners, you are the first black African to scale all seven of the world's major mountain peaks and the first to successfully climb up Everest. Absolutely. Congratulations. Yeah, indeed. Thank you very much. It is a feat on its own, but yeah, yeah I'm very grateful for that. You've recently also just taken part in the new Vintook ad campaign, um, which talks about men that are made of the right stuff. What do you think you have that makes you of the right stuff, and what do you think other men have, what they should have, etc., that will give them what it takes? Well, I, I, first of all, I'd like to thank Vintook really for, for believing in me and for seeing the this, seeing this similarities between, between me and them as a brand, between me as a brand on my own. But yeah, men, men made of the right stuff, I, I think, in my view, are men that are really pure, men that are very genuine. And I believe I, I, I portray that in whatever else I do. Uh, because, I mean, as I, I come from a very humble background, but I've never changed. I've remained the same for uh, since when I was young until about now. And that's what you need. And that is what makes me uh, the, the man or the person made of the right stuff. Now, that's very similar to Vintok, who since 1920s when they were started in Namibia um, have remained true to themselves using only pure ingredients with the same sort of formula etc. Who else do you think remains true to themselves? Who do you look up to? I've got I've got many people that I look at that uh, I believe are men of the men, the men that are made of the right stuff. People all of us will jump up and say Nelson Mandela said 100%. I look up to him, and I look to other adventures as well. That uh, there's a person that uh, I look up to who's been doing expeditions way before I was born. In fact, he's on an expedition right now as as we speak, and he's he's remained the same. And I had the chance opportunity to team up with him on an expedition. Well, to say. That names, uh, Ronald Fiennes, a British polar explorer, world-renowned. Uh, for, for two months I was with this great man who we all adore and who most people look up to when it comes to adventuring, but he was down to earth and he's pure, he's genuine. So those are people that I look up to and that I try to emulate if one can possibly do that, which I, think I believe it's really near, near impossible to do. We all are unique on our own right, as to speak, but yes, those are people I look up to. Now going back to the campaign, um, the advert forms part of a larger movement, which is the Vintook's Pure Beer Society. Can you tell me a, bit, a little bit more about that? The Vintook Pure Beer Society, it's obviously a way to, to have fans, to have people or followers in a way. And, and I think Vintook is doing quite, quite well in, in having obviously established that and particularly having a, a linked with me and connected with me. People really relate to me in what I do and now now there's Vintook on the other side. So this society is going to be really growing and becoming much more stronger. And as a brand, I think they need that. And this is a perfect opportunity for them to like exploit that as well, using me. And I'm very grateful for that too. Um, I mean, they're quite a very great, vibrant brand and being part of the society. And in fact, even to talk about that, I remember I had to answer questions that people were asking. It was amazing that they could really relate mm. to what I do. What, what it, what is it like climbing Everest and why did you do it? Weren't you scared of dying? Things like that. And now I'm having to send back those ones to this little big club or society. I'm sure it's quite really quite amazing, but it will just keep the brand vibrant and growing. Now, along with this pure beer society, Vintuk as a brand follows one of the oldest food regulations in the world, the Reinheitsgebot. And it's basically got to do with using pure ingredients in the best way possible. How do you think the campaign suits this? And how do you think your brand ambassadorship relates as well? Well, you, you look at what the people really want. And I don't, I don't believe that people want anything that, that's fake. They want, they want them something genuine, and and if they are, if Vintuk is still sticking to their original uh, purest being from ever since they they came to exist, um, that way they are living the legacy that they will, that, that, that that they live for that they promote, and in as much as in a similar way as I am, I, I'm building a legacy that I want to one day leave behind for Africa and for the continent. So these are these are two amazing brands that have merged or teamed up together just to portray that, 
that is what you do if you want to leave a legacy. You don't chop and change because then you, you, lose, you lose that legacy behind that. So you just have to be genuine and, and, and that's it. Well, going back to your legacy, you started from really humble beginnings as a goat herder in Swaziland. You're now one of the world's most revered adventurers. Can you tell us a bit more about your journey and what got you here? Wow, my journey has been quite an amazing one, much more, very inspiring even to myself as well. Because like you say, I, I, I came from probably much more very poor conditions or, or upbringing and everything because when I was young, I always say if people have seen me, had seen me when before the age of 10, they would look, look at me and say, he will amount to nothing because I looked poor, I, I was walking naked, barefoot, chasing goats and cows. But um, they would have been wrong because when people started giving me opportunities, I would take them because I had the self-belief that I deserved better. And that is what I believe about anybody, any person, regardless of being African or, or something. But then obviously now, having, been, having become the first black person to do amazing things, coming from a humble background, it sort of like sets that example. But it took me about the age of 26 years when I got introduced to climbing. By chance, I met somebody in a game reserve who said, Sibu I think you've got a, a talent for climbing while I was helping him in this walk. So I had to, I tried to talk him off that idea because I said, I don't think we Africans, black people in Africa climb mountains. Mm. And he says to me, well, but I see the talent is there. And it is more than 40 years since Hillary climbed Everest. It has not been climbed by an African. But then I said to him, no, it's not because we cannot do it. I believe it's not, it's that we, it's because we cannot afford it. So then he put me on the spotlight by saying, do you want to tell me if money wasn't an issue, would you do it? I said, absolutely. But what made me to say that was just the pride within me that we Africans do have what it, we have what it takes to achieve great things. And the, re the rest is history, as they say. But the journey has been really very inspiring. It has been humbling, uh, quite daunting at some, some stage. But I'm very grateful that I've stood by what I believe in and here I am today. Well, you've obviously proven that you have what it takes and that you're made of the right stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very <laughs> much for are. joining us this morning. Thank you very much indeed. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.